Hey riders, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Review Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures. I've been riding and guiding motorcycle trips around the world for over 10 years now. Today we have the opportunity to pit two of the most highly sought after motorcycles in the market against each other. KTM 790 Adventure R model and the new Yamaha Tenere 700. Let's get into character. What a great topic we have to cover here today. The market has been asking for years for more and better options in that middleweight 400 to 500 pound category of twin cylinder adventure bikes. You know, not everybody wants those big 1200 cc monsters and of course the single cylinder thumpers aren't always appropriate either. So what we've got here are two very similarly statured bikes. Both have their advantages one over the other and we're gonna get into it here and show you what I think are some of the finer points of each and help you decide which one is best for you. So let's dig into some of the advantages that I think that each bike has over the other, starting with the KTM. And the first would be that in classic KTM form, this 799cc power plant, twin cylinder parallel upright, is putting out 95 horsepower and you will know it when you twist your wrist. Great power to rate ratio, it's always there for you from down low in the revs on up high, you will know that you have a beast of an engine at your command. As compared to the Yamaha, still 74 horsepower, it's a lot and more than any of us would ever need, but KTM does step ahead just a little bit in that power category. The KTM also does come with electronic and ride control settings and traction control and things like that that the Yamaha does not. Are those really good things? Yes, of course, traction control can save you in situations when you're depending on having traction. It can also be a distraction. It can be something you forget to turn off and then you're forgetting that uh, you wanted it off when you need to cross a berm or something like that. So ultimately, probably nice to have those features and it is something that Yamaha doesn't have. But uh, anyway, it's something for you to consider whether it's an advantage or not. I mean, ultimately features like this can be complicated in the sense that uh, you, you sometimes, you know, when you're bouncing between different settings, you've got inconsistencies then, and again, you might not be ready for what's ahead. There are also features that uh, fail. You know, this bike, we just pulled it out of the shop, trying to figure out why the software settings won't maintain when we turn it off, and why sometimes the ABS and the trash control turns back on while I'm riding it. So it's in the shop having to be dealt with, and uh, something that, I mentioned it as a feature that the KTM comes with and the Yamaha doesn't, that again, it's supposed to be a bonus, but really only if it is working as it's supposed to. And if you remember to turn it on, on and off the way that you want it. When comparing the two bikes, the KTM does have, ultimately have that slightly better fit and finish. When you look at the levers and the controls and the just the lines and the paint and everything, the way it all ties together. Not that the Yamaha looks anything really cheap or anything, but there's just a nicer finish and touch when you look at that KTM. So the KTM does come with tubeless wheel set already. The Yamaha still needs tubes in these wheels. And ultimately that is a nice feature to have. You know, most flat tires are caused by a nail or a screw or something simple like that. You can quickly pop that out and throw a plug in and be rolling again in five or 10 minutes versus having to take all the wheels off and replace tubes and stuff like that. Keep in mind always that tubeless wheels do have their downside. And if you do take a serious enough a hit to dent a rim, you can not have a seal around that bead then and now you're at a disadvantage by having tubeless wheels. For that reason, always good to carry a spare tube or two with you in case you do dent a wheel and need to basically turn it into a tube type tire. And one more advantage we have here with the KTM over the Yamaha is the suspension. Not only the quality of the components, the great 48 millimeter front forks that they gave, but the ease and quickness with which you can adjust the settings of it all. So right on top of the front forks, you've got your preload settings, compression is re and rebound as well. No need to get out wrenches and tools and hit all the clickers and everything. You do it right up top there. And the rear suspension, the preload is fully adjustable along with compression and rebound. 
pretty easy to get at. You know, on the Yamaha, those settings and adjustability are there. The quality of the componentry, I don't feel it being quite as good with the valving and whatnot. Also, the front springs on the Yamaha are not preload adjustable, but uh, again, slight advantage to the KTM there. So again, the KTM, a great bike with some advantages. The Yamaha has some advantages I'd like to mention over the KTM. One of those being that by the time you walk out of the showroom, you still have about 3,500 US dollars as of this introductory year, 3,500 bucks left in your pocket for travel. 3,500 bucks, what is that? Like a few hundred burritos down in Mexico, it could be a bunch of shots of tequila, it could be a couple months of travel, however you want to figure it out. $3,500 in savings versus the other bike, it's quite a point to consider. Another really interesting thing that Yamaha did here, you might have heard about, is this anti-squat setup they had by basically by arranging the engine and transmission in a way that you have your counter sprocket much higher than normal on this entire setup, on the powertrain. You have it up here allowing you a steeper swing arm angle that um, basically avoids squat. When you apply power on a motorcycle, it tends to pull on the rear wheel and the rear swing arm in a way that the whole drivetrain swings up into the lower part of the bike here. And so by this arrangement right here, you're not squatting so much. And in fact, you're actually putting power into the front wheel. I'd like to give a quick nod to Ryan and the team on the Fortnite channel on YouTube. We'll put a link in the description down below. They did an excellent job with some different props and gearing and, 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 and such to show you how this actually works and what this means to you while you're riding. But to me, it means weight going in the front when I want it to. Uh, not wasting power and suspension travel for hill climbs and things like that by not squatting it with the power of the engine. It's just absolutely great what they did here and it turns out to be a great handling bike as a result. Another great thing about this bike is that it is a Yamaha. Not to kick KTM when they're not here to defend themselves. They do make great bikes, but this one's a little less likely to be in the shop. This one, just for filming today, we actually had to pull it out of the shop. It was reworking software confusion that we have. And we found that we have a fuel overflow ventilation tube that is pinched and not allowing the, the, the fuel tank to breathe. So again, little quirks seem to come along with the ownership of the other brand. These Yamahas, it's very well documented that they're reliable, trustworthy motorcycles. They're gonna be perfect for your travels. So I know I mentioned that the KTM has those rider control settings, traction control, and software functions that you can play with. And yes, they can work to your advantage. I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's an advantage to not have those to distract you. Again, it's something that can go wrong with the bike. You can have to rework your software, but also by, by depending on things like traction control and all these varying settings of sensitivity, Aren't you taking something away from yourself by just learning to feel what is happening beneath you as you're riding? Learn to work with your body and your legs and your feet, the engine and the clutch and the suspension. Learn how to put traction down into the ground yourself instead of de depending on some computer system which could ultimately fail to do it for you. Again, I think the Yamaha has a slight advantage here in rider training and becoming a better rider. You don't need those things to begin with and it helps keep the price down. So one last point that I will admit, I kind of like riding the Yamaha a little bit more than I do the KTM. I know that's gonna blow a lot of people's minds. The 790 Adventure R is a great bike. We waited long for it and it is delivering, but there's something about the slenderness, the shape, the size and the girth of this Yamaha that I like a little bit more than the KTM. You know, even factory, just the way that it comes with the handlebar rises that are on there, it just works better for me already from a standing position. Now, that'll be different for everybody. We are all different sizes and shapes, and maybe you like the more squat, the wider seat feeling of the KTM. Also with those saddlebag uh, fuel uh, tanks down low like that, it, it, maybe you prefer that. But I myself, I want an athletic bike, something that feels like a rally bike. And to me, the Yamaha is closer to that feeling, and I do like riding it a little bit more. So perhaps a fun way to think about the differences and the characteristics of these two bikes is to think of the KTM as the lion and the Yamaha as the gazelle. Look, they're both absolutely incredible with what they do. Beautiful to look at, amazing in the way that they move. 
KTM sometimes has that attitude. In addition to being such a high priced, expensive option to buy, the maintenance issues. You know, sometimes it takes a shit in the shop just before our customers arrive. Now we gotta figure out why the headlight stays on with the key out and has electrical problems and fuel ventilation issues and things like that. What, you didn't like that remark? Well, why don't you cry about it? Saddlebags? Yes, it's an incredibly exciting bike when you light up and all that power snaps into play. But is that power really necessary? Or can you get by with something more graceful and elegant like the Gazelle that is still plenty powerful and very, very fast? But again, more on the simple, the reliable, the graceful, the easy, the athletic side of things. Something that I admitted just a moment ago that it's a little more enjoyable for me to ride. Again, both great bikes, but that might help you characterize or choose which one more matches your character. Do you need the wild beast? Or can you just be happy traveling and enjoying what's around you and not worry so much about how much time your front wheel spends up in the air? So anyway, hope those thoughts help you. They're both great bikes. I'd be happy to own either and I'm sure you would too, but thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to let us know in the description below which one are you going to end up with and uh, what other bikes do you want to hear us talk about and review. So thanks for watching everyone. Ride on. We'll see you out there. <laughs> uh, should we do it again? <laughs> <laughs>